Hi guys, here's Ricardo Fasoli with another video about color correction and color grading and again with the color finale. They asked me to do this video and I'm really happy to help them uh, if, if I can help in somehow because this plugin is the one that hold me in Final Cut. Normally I should switch, switch to switch to uh, DaVinci Resolve, everybody's saying that DaVinci Resolve it's, uh, it's the best uh, uh, editing program, but I, I feel so comfortable and so good with Final Cut that, that uh, um, I have no need to switch for an to another program. And uh, Color Finale, it's the tool that makes Final Cut almost like DaVinci in the, in the color grading part. Almost, I say, almost. Be quiet, almost. But it's going every time better, that, that plugin, uh, that color finale plugin. <laughs> so, ragazzi, be quiet. Don't be. Uh, eh? Okay. So, what I'm doing, I'm shooting with the A7S Mark III weightings and uh, the FX3. They are both the same camera on a different kind of body. And the possibility, this camera has the possibility to shoot in 10 bit, like the most of the actual camera now. So before we were shooting all in 8 bit and now 10 bit. And I'm using this kind of possibility also to be a little bit more flexible in somehow on shooting on the wedding day. Because, as you know, shooting weddings, uh, it's everything about uh, timing, uh, to be prepared, to be fast, uh, to don't think too much, uh, to have the tools in the hand that give you the possibility to capture moments that they will never repeat again. So, what I'm doing now with this camera, I have set the, the preset, so the 1 and 2 and 3, as uh, the frame rate. So, I shoot the most of the time now at 24 frames per second, with sometimes 60 and really rarely uh, 120 frames per second. And uh, this kind of frame per second, I have set it on the place 1, 2 and 3. 1 for 24 frames per second, 2 for 60 frames per second and 3 for 120 frames per second. All of them, they have the white balance at 5500 Kelvin the whole day. So from the morning till the evening, also if there's the yellow light, I have it at 5500 because I saw that with this 10 bit I can control quite good in post-production uh, the white balance in the place where I can work. And like this I have to think a little bit less on the waiting day about the white balance. Before when I had the A7S II and the A7 III that I was shooting 8 bit um, I was uh, uh, changing white balance from the more, depend where I was, I was changing the white balance. I done a period also with the color checker. But all these kind of things, they slow my, uh, my workflow on the shooting, on the waiting day. Uh, other things what I'm using is the, the picture profile, is the ice log free uh, in this case. So um, log profile. I'm most of the camera that you are using guys that has a log profile and the that that profile it it helps you to uh, maximize the dynamic range of the camera so you get much more uh, details on the shadow and in the highlight and this is uh, gives you also more flexibility in post production with the contrast and with the colors um, so what I'm using in this moment also as codec is uh, um, I'm using the HS but I know that is a little bit a complex so a little bit it's a quite a complex codec so a little bit harder to work on your computer but I saw with using the HS the 420 not the 422 it gives me the possibility to work quite fluently on my computer. It's a quite strong computer what I have in this moment. Uh, but it's, it's, working, it's working quite good. 
and uh, I have the possibility to preview the, the footage. Before the, with the 422, I couldn't uh, preview the footage on the uh, computer. So on the, on the finder, I couldn't preview the footage. And I find quite useful to, um, to have the possibility to preview without going inside uh, any programs or software that I can preview. So what I'm using now is the HS, the 420 10-bit. This is the, the codec what I'm using in this moment. 422 and 420, I didn't saw a lot of difference in kind. Of, actually, I didn't see any uh, difference at all uh, about the color, um, about the grading. I tried to push it, uh, the contrast and the saturation to see if I could find any big difference uh, on the, the um, 422 and the 420, but I didn't find it. And uh, to use it 420 in this moment, it helps me a lot uh, um, because I can preview and it's uh, okay on the editing program. So I can edit it quite good. So this is the way how I shoot um, I shoot the, the waiting, so it's S-Log free, every time overexposed, I try to stay at plus two, and uh, the codec is the HS420 10-bit, okay? So let's go on the, um, in Final Cut, and I have some footage here from some weddings or shooting. Um, this is our old footage um, from the A7S uh, Mark uh, III or the FX3. And they were all shooted in that kind of way. So as I say to you in S-Log3, as you see the image were quite flat uh, and um, this is uh, how I like to work. I like to have a lot of flexibility also in post-production. I every time change my mind uh, also about the color, about how to do it, how to have the look. Uh, and I like to experimentate a lot. And this kind of footage they give me the possibility that I can make what, whatever I want, actually. Uh, so what I do when I have this kind of footage and uh, how I correct it. Uh, say, ah, the S-Log is so difficult to correct. Uh, yes, it's not easy, but uh, I, I try to explain you a couple of ways uh, that I'm using that, that gives uh, a lot of flexibility and it's not difficult at all. Let's go. This is crazy. So let's let I show you. Uh, the most of the time uh, people they are using Lutz or something that helps to go in a place where the log it goes to the rec 709 um, it's it's a good it's a good way to start but i'm not using that because actually the the loot that transform the s log 3 or any kind of log into rec 709 is nothing else than a curve, the right curve that the house is meant to be to, to bring it into a picture profile, a 709, a Rec 709, and the right saturation point to that, that plane. So it's not doing anything with the colors, it's doing a curve, a contrast curve, and a saturation, uh, the, the, the point of saturation on the image. And I want to make what I want with this element. So I do it everything manually. I doing by myself this kind of correction to get it in a place where I want to start. Uh, Color Finale has some tools here that helps uh, to correct this um, um, the log profile in a fast way and a really mathematical right way i would say but i i i never like the result and so i'm doing every time 
these things manually. Only to show you here, if I use ASEX, for example, or assume log, this is a log video, if I assume log, this is the kind of result that is get. It's okay, it's not bad to start with, but uh, uh, I, I prefer to start from do whatever I want with that, so I not use that. And ASEX, that is the most, uh, um, the right really, the, the, the way how should the log S log 3 in this case, uh, this is how it looks uh, already done. But uh, yeah, this is the result that it's, it's, it's already good. It's, uh, I have to say that is already a good result. For sure, as you can see, the contrast, it's full, the color, the saturation, it's a really a good result. But I use uh, to make it everything manually. What I'm doing, my best friend on color correction, color grading, uh, white balance and everything, my best friend, they are the curves. The curves were my best friend about correcting the image. So in this case, what I'm doing, I add the first curve and I holding in master and with watching here the graphic, I only look for a black point. So I bring the shadow into a place where I find nice to have the black point. And uh, in this case, uh, this is, is the most highlight part, uh, that is the, um, the veil of the bride. I try to bring it in the place where I think that should be that veil, so here. That is my first part. I only put uh, the point where is the highlight and where is the shadow in this log. Then I add another curve and here, I choose the contrast, so I choose how much compress I want the, the shadow and how much compress I want the highlight. I want the highlight, and so with here, I bring down the shadow, and really the minimal movement it makes a big difference now. So every time play a lot and watch what happened there, where you like to have it. And here I create that kind of S curve that help me to see already where I want the image that would be so like this. I would say like this, like that. And then I add the saturation here. In this moment, for me, the image is corrected, but I correct how I want it how I wanted to have the, the shadow, how I wanted to have the highlights. I done, um, I done the recipe <laughs> for this, this kind of contrast. Other things what I'm doing, I want to give a look. This is another things. So let's begin to create a give a look to this image. I like that moody touch, a little bit cinematic. So what I'm doing with the image. I create another curve. I love the curves. But this one, I bring it under in this place and I want to compress more the highlights and the shadow. So I bring the shadow up like this and I bring the highlights down like this. Like this, I compress again the information, I bring a little bit more up the shadow that it gives a little bit that flat look. Um, I like it like this, so this is what I'm doing. Then uh, let's see what other things we can do. So let's go, we can go again with curves uh, if I want to give that kind of brownish look. Uh, um, it's enough to put one point of red in the shadow, a little bit like this, and a little bit of yellow like this. And already we have that kind of brownish look uh, on, on the image. Okay, now I have a kind of look that I could use, that I like it. 
here I can go with the fine tuning. So how I want, I want a little bit more moody. So I go a little bit more down, for example, here with the exposure, I can go a little bit more down. What I'm doing, it's uh, the most of the time I put away the sharpness completely. And in this slider, it's uh, to put away the sharpness, it's really, really soft and it's enough to give a little bit less of a digital look. So I put it away completely. It's, it's really minimal, guys. You, you almost don't see the difference between uh, this one, that is the sharpness at zero, and this one. It's really, really, really soft. The details, they are still all there. They are still all there. Uh, I don't know how it would be the compression with YouTube or stuff or Vimeo, but uh, I like to have it, the image a little bit softer, not so sharp, because the sharpness, it, it makes the image too digital. Then uh, what I'm doing is using the grain. And the grain, what I'm changing here, is so I activated here the grain. I put the grain amount, the grain size, I make the grain a little bit uh, uh, fatter, a little bit, and then the color variation, I put it at the maximum. This is what it's doing, it creates the grain that is a little bit a mix of red, green and blue. And uh, this is gives also the feeling that the image is created by the grain. <laughs> so if I have it uh, like this, it will be in black and white, uh, and like this, it will be with, uh, with a little bit of color. And this is how the image, uh, it, it will be. So coming from here, I've got this kind of result, as you can see with uh, in, in a fast way, I could say, and uh, how I wanted. It's the look that I wanted to have.